Hi friends. Today we are going to discuss about radicals. Radicals. What are they? Radicals are basically the opposite operation of applying exponents. For example, let's say we we know what four square is. Sixteen. Then, if we wanted to find the square root of sixteen, this would equal to four. Now, in this square root, by default, the two is not written. This root symbol and this root symbol is the same. Okay, let's go on to. common radicals okay as we previously saw a square root or second root is written as this a cube root is written like this a fourth root is written like this and a fifth root is written like this and so on Now, I'm going to look at the parts of a radical symbol. Okay. Let's say I have, um, for example, the cube root of sixty-four. Now, the check mark part, almost like a check mark, that's called A radical. The line across the top is called the vinculum, and the number tucked inside the check mark is called the index, and the number inside of the radical symbol and the index is called the argument of the radical or the radicand. these are all the parts of a normal radical okay now let's say we have the square root or root of 3 and we are multiplying that number by itself what would we get now the square root stays as it as it is and we happen to get 3 square because we have 3 into 3 now we can see that we have 2 as the index and 2 as the exponent so when happening this A radical can be undone with a power, and the power can be undone with a radical. So we can see that two and the radical cross out, so we get three. Next, let's see the cube root, which is written like this again. Um, let's see, twenty-seven multiplied by itself two more times. Now, since we have three times of this, we would get the third root. The third, the cube root stays like that. Twenty-seven becomes twenty-seven cubed. As we can see, also we can cross these two out. It cancels, and we are left with twenty-seven. Next, let's say we have um the fourth root of um sixteen times the fourth root of sixteen. I'm 
not two more times. This again would mean the fourth root stays like that. It stays the same. And 16 times 16 times 16 times 16, 16 power 4. So we can cancel the exponent in the root. So we are left with 16. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Usually when doing these type of sums, like this, we don't have to do the cancelling thing every time. It's best to write it as um, just 16. Now, let's look at the rules of radicals. Okay, this is just for an example. Let's say the whole root of A divided by B. What B equal to? That means it's the same as the root of A divided by the root of B. Now, if we have the root of A times B or AB simply, it will be equal to the root of A times the root of B, which can be written as root of A root of B. Now that we've looked at the radicals rules, we can go on to some example problems. Okay, let's see, we'll take um, the root of 16 x power 4. Now, we know that a root is basically equal to the square root. What we have to look forward to is to cancelling it. Now, we can see that x power 4 is the same as x power 2 times x power 2. This uses the exponent rule as we can see and 16 can be done as 4 into 4. Now we know that 4 into 4 is equal to 4 square. Now we have two x's with the exponent 2. So the root cancels out for these two and we are left with two x's multiplied together which means we have x square. Okay, now in this 4 square we can also cancel this out which we are left with 4 times x times x which is equal to 4x square. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Let's look at the next question. We have the root of 12 a power 4, b power 7, and c power 3. Now, since this is a square root, our goal is to see if there are any squares inside the root and cancel the root out. Okay, now let's see. We can split it as the root of, let's see, 12. 12. What can we split it at? It can be split it as 4 into 3. 4 is equal to, 4 is basically the same as 2 square, which has the exponent 2. So, there are chances of cancelling out the root. So, we can write it as 2 square into 3. Let's write that here. Let's look at a power 4. a square times a square, b power 7. Everything uses the exponent rule here. Now, b power 7, b power 2 times b power 2 times b power 2 
times b. Now, why the extra b? Because anything by itself is basically power 1 and using the exponent rule, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6 plus 1 will be equal to 7. The next. Now, we have c square, c cube, so we would write c square times c, power 1, so this one state. Okay, now we can see that we have exponents, which are 2 here, so it's looking forward to cancel out. 2 square cancels, a square, a square cancels out, b square, b square, b square, it cancels out with the root only because it's a square root. Since we have b power 1 that stays inside the root, it will cancel. c square cancels, c power 1 stays inside the root. Now, 2, that's outside of the root. a into a, b into b into b, And C. Now we have still some left. So we'll open the root. We have this 3 into the extra B. And the extra C. So the answer is 2. A times A is B square. B times B times B is B cubed. And C, open the root, 3, B, C. This is the final answer. Let's look at the next question. Um, let's say the root of 3 plus the root of 5 multiplied by the root of 3 again minus the root of 6. Now, we know what to do while doing this. We multiply root 3 by root 5, root 3 by root 3. Now, since we have 2, it's pretty much the same thing. We multiply this by this, this by this, and multiply signs, this by this, this by this. Okay. Plus into plus is plus. Root 3 into root 3 plus into minus is minus root 3 into root 6. Again, plus into plus plus root 5 into root 3 plus into minus minus root 5 dot root 6. Okay. Root 3 times root 3 simplifies as 3 minus I see root 3 and root 6. Root 6 can be simplified as root 3 into root 2. So, I have the root 3 here, again the root 3 here, and the root 2. Plus, I don't have much to simplify here. Five, so, I just multiply it directly. 5 times 3 is 15, the root of 15. Minus, I also see a 6 here, but that was to cancel out the 3 here. And we don't have 3 here, so we can't do that. I have just directly multiplied 6 and 5. We get the root of um, 30. Now, we can simplify 3 to 3. Root of 3 to root of 3 again as 3. So, we have 3 minus 3 times the root of 2 plus the root of 15 minus the root of 30.
Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Now I have the cube root of 5 divided by the root of 5. Now, let's see what we can do. We have now whenever seeing a cube root or a um, second root or square root the cube here and the root is equal to power 1 by 3. The 3 comes in the index and the power is further 5. So we can write this as 5 power 1 by 3 divided by 5 power 1 by 2. Now we can see that we can use the quotient rule. So we'll do that. We have 5 power 1 by 3 minus 1 by 2. That would equal to 5 power negative 1 by 6. Now we know the negative exponent rule. So we'll just make it as 1 divided by 5 power 1 divided by 6. So we can write this as 1. Again we turn it into a root. Divided by the 6th root of 5. If you found this video useful, you can share it with your friends. I'll meet you with another interesting video. Until then, bye.